Standing in front of the brand new BMW i4 is Don Smith, who is the product manager at BMW. And Don, this is an exciting new car from BMW, electric only, brand new platform. So what exactly are we looking at here? Right, so this is the i4 eDrive 40. We offer two variants. This particular one is rear wheel drive, motor in the back, 335 horsepower, starting price of 55,400. And we expect an EPA range of about 300 miles. And then we also have an i4 M50. So this is the first time we've combined the Got M it. brand with the i brand. And the eDrive 40 is rear wheel drive. That's right. The M50 is all wheel drive. Yes. And I would have just, you can only assume that means there's an asectic, a second electric motor on the front axle for the M50s. Exactly. So with the i4 M50, we have a motor in the front, a motor in the rear, and this is, brings uh, 536 horsepower. Now, this one being rear wheel drive only, we're looking at, is it 300? 335 horsepower. 335 horsepower, which is not a bad number. So, um, first thing, let's look at a couple of design details. I'm noticing this nice blue strip going along from behind the front wheel up to ahead of the rear wheel. And uh, the wheels themselves look like um, low drag, but designed wheels, yeah? Absolutely. So the, the blue strip is the typical BMW i blue design element. Uh, it's an option. We'll actually offer three different colors. There's a high gloss black, yeah. BMW i blue, and also gray. And as you noted, this is an aerodynamic wheel. We call this an air performance wheel. And it's designed to both optimize uh, a, a low coefficient of drag, which of course benefits in increasing your range, uh, but also it looks great. So what you have here are actually inserts that go into the wheel. Ah. Yep. And, uh, and are those different design elements? Those inserts can be changed? Uh, they cannot be changed. However, we offer multiple different designs of wheel types. Got it. Uh, so we have 18, 19s, and 20s, different variations. Uh, however, uh, all optimized for aerodynamics. So let's talk a little bit about the powertrain. So you've got um, 335 horsepower electric motor in the back. Right. I'm assuming if you get all-wheel drive, that's a smaller motor in front for right. the 536. How big is the battery pack and where is the battery pack? Right, so the battery pack for both are located basically beneath the floor and also down the center tunnel. So we're if we were to open the door... Yeah, so down down below the floor and also in the center tunnel. Okay. So we're looking at 81.5 uh, kilowatt hour um, net and about 84 gross. Got it. Okay. Okay. So that puts you at uh, over 90% use. Right. Right. Which is, that's pretty standard. The, this is a lithium ion battery pack. That's correct. And it's better, it helps protect the life of the lithium ion battery pack by not using all 100% of its capacity. Exactly. And you can actually make an adjustment in the vehicle to determine how much you want to charge the vehicle. So Great. Uh, if you're just commuting back and forth, you're not necessarily taking a long trip, you can set your max charge at 80% or 70 or however you wish. Uh, but of course, if you're going on a longer journey, you can just do the full, uh, well, the full net uh, capacity of the battery. Why don't we hop inside, you hop in the driver's side, sure. and I'll join you in the passenger side, and you can tell me a little bit more. Obvious, first thing we notice here is it looks like a pair of very wide screen uh, monitors here, one that would function as an instrument cl cluster and a second as an infotainment screen. Exactly. So this is our new BMW curved display. Uh, it's curved and angled towards the driver, but of course it's still very functional for the passenger. And this is really a digital interpretation of that classic BMW driver orientation. Uh, so you're right, there are two discrete displays, but it's under one solid piece of curved glass and then the back housing is actually magnesium. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And uh, what, um, what new technologies come with having this curved piece of glass? So this features our all new BMW iDrive 8. So this is the eighth version of our iDrive operating system, which we debuted back in roughly 2001. And what? And we, there is the there is the telltale iDrive dial right there, and some more buttons here. What what's some of the new technologies that the eighth generation brings us? So 
firstly, what I would call out... Does it come with cup holders now? Is that what I'm looking at? Those are eighth yeah, generation cup holders? Eighth generation cup holders to fit all your big gulps. <laughs> so uh, what we've actually done with this, and this is also in the iX, is we've reduced the switch gear by roughly 50%. So you'll notice mm. it's very clean and very simple here. Yes, absolutely. And we also uh, integrate a lot more controls in the touchscreen, but we, as you noted, we kept the classic BMW iDrive controller. Yes. So for us, we really feel that this is the optimal balance. So it's a little bit of physical controls, it's touchscreen, and it's also voice. And roughly speaking, just getting a general level, if this is a this is an electric car new platform. Is this just roughly, would you say, three series size, this car? It's essentially the size of a 4 Series Grand Coupe. Okay, okay. Uh, so you do have the functionality of a hatch in the rear uh, and the seats fold down so there's, there's quite a bit of cargo space. Well let's take a look at that. We don't have fold down seats but let's take a look at that rear. So there's the rear space that you were talking about and then you said hatchback. So here you can see that the hatch opens. Yep, and then we have uh, looks like 40-20-40 split folding seats here. Yep, and there's even a little bit underneath. Right. This one is actually... Now that's surprising, because usually you're expecting just more battery. Right, right. And this one actually is taken up uh, by some of the hi-fi. You can see the Harman Kardon branding, a little yes. bit of the hi-fi elements, um, but you also have space there, which is great for your charging cable, for example. Great, yeah. So this will come standard with what we call a flexible fast charger, which actually works on 120 and 240 volts. Okay. Uh, of course, 120 to plugging in into your typical outlet. Um, and you just attach an adapter and then you can charge at 9.6 kilowatt on a 240 volt plug. Very good. So if this is a rear wheel drive car, and I'm, a, I'm guessing that the electric motor is in fact at the rear axle, what's under the hood? Actually, uh, under the hood, we do not have a front. Um, <laughs> so, So, as I mentioned earlier, we actually have this i4 eDrive 40 and the i4 M50, so the i4 M50 does have a motor, um, but for the most part, right. what you find under there, so this is just Whoa. a plastic sheet, yeah. um, but there's, under this is essentially your uh, your CCU or your charging unit, Okay. there's an HVAC system, which is a heat pump, yeah. and of course in the case of the i4 M50, you have the motor as well. So. Uh, there wouldn't be a whole lot of room left over for storage. And of course, if you were going to have storage, you'd want it to be weather tight and airtight. Uh, so at the end of the day, the idea is to keep, for example, your charging uh, cord in the trunk. And I'm looking at these front kidney grills. They're the, the new kind of, the rebirth of the original design of kidney grills, yeah. you could say. But these are largely blocked off. Obviously, there's not a radiator right here to worry about. Um, so. What, what are these vents down here? What are we still cooling? So you still need cooling for the battery, for the climate control, uh, for the charging unit. So these flaps actually uh, are open on the lower portion. Uh -huh. uh, they do open and close as needed. Uh, but you're right, for the most part, this is completely blocked off because there's really no need to cool, of course, uh, an internal combustion motor. And then what, what kind of headlights are we looking at here? They look they look lovely. Of course, uh, LED, I would presume. These are actually the optional laser headlights. Ah. There's all this new technology that BMW is working on. Obviously, all the momentum is going towards electric vehicles, right. but BMW is known for really high, really nice vehicle dynamics, driving dynamics. What are you guys doing to maintain that as we get transition to this new era of powertrains? So, yeah, it's a great point. And this car is built upon a long legacy of BMW sports events. Uh, so what you'll see is the classic BMW proportions. They have a very long wheelbase, very short overhangs in the front, yeah. short overhangs in the rear. Yeah. It's a wide track. You have classic proportions for what anyone would expect from a BMW sports yeah. sedan. Um, we have actually standard air suspension in the rear. Okay, uh, load leveling? Yep. 
your last generation of these vehicles were the i3 and the i8, and they did have, the i8 was plug-in hybrid. Well, it was a plug-in hybrid. And the i3 did have a motor generator backup. Right. This, that's not gonna be an option on these. No, this is pure battery electric. It's not a plug-in hybrid. Uh, so, so there are no tailpipes and no options or range extenders or anything yeah. like that. Uh, it went 300 miles uh, uh, range. Really, no need for the range extender, uh, and even on the i4 M50, we're expecting roughly 245, which is uh, a fair amount of range. And you lose you lose some of that range with the second motor and the added weight and those types of things. Well, is that right? It's, it's the extra power, but also wheel and tire combination play a uh, big role in that. So if you have uh, a yeah, sure, sure. Wheel and tire, uh, that's optimized for performance and traction, and of course that'll affect your range in a negative way. An 81 uh, kilowatt hour battery is not the largest battery pack we've heard of, but a 300 mile range is higher than we're used to hearing. Can you speak to what allowed you guys to get to a higher range with a battery pack that hasn't really grown? Yeah, there's there's a lot of measures really. It's like this, the, the sum of the parts uh, sort of logic on that. But one key element is aerodynamics, and actually you can see that in the front. So we already mentioned the closed off grill. We have air curtains here, which help with aerodynamics. And, and the, those are those are those are functional. Then. Those are functional. So it brings air around the front and along the side. And of course we have the wheels, which are designed for aero as well. Yeah, uh, and you can see the vents in back. Right. And so the coefficient of drag on this particular car is 0.24. Okay. Which makes it the most aerodynamic car we produce. And uh, you did mention the BMW i8 earlier. Yeah. Believe it or not, this car is more aerodynamic than the i8. <laughs> as is the iX, which is an incredible achievement given the size and shape of that vehicle. Well, that is the most wonderful segue I ever heard. Do you want to show me Let's the iX? It. Yeah, absolutely. And here is the iX, which is uh, I, the same platform, right? But in an SUV shape. Actually different. Uh, the iX is on its own designated EV platform. No kidding. So yeah. separate from the i4. Absolutely. It's the same, same family of platforms? Uh, no, there's commonality in powertrains. So our fifth generation e-drive powertrains uh, can be used uh, across different models, on different axles, as we've seen with the i4. Uh, batteries uh, as well, but this is actually on its own specific EV platform. Once we take a look at the NCI, you'll notice that with a very flat load floor. I see. Now, the first thing I notice is similar shape, but actually different texture and design and open space here in the kidney grill. Yeah, so this is actually what we call now an intelligence panel. Okay. Uh, first and foremost... Uh, yeah, I suppose it's not a, technically a grill anymore. It's not a it? grill anymore. Uh, but first and foremost, we decided to keep this uh, because we wanted the car to look uniquely like a BMW. And there's nothing more iconic uh, than the twin kidney grill. So that really makes its presence known as a BMW. But of course, having an open grill to cool a motor that's not there really isn't very sensible. So we actually closed it off and we've reinvented its purpose in life. So now it serves as an intelligence panel where we house sensors for parking and driving assistance. We've got the front view Elements. camera. Right. That's probably just for parking and things. And I see some sensors here. There's some ultrasonic here. here, that's right. And this almost looks like ACC under here. It's really dark. It's but actually not. So the, that's actually hidden ah, behind no the grill. Okay. And so hidden behind here is the laser. And there actually are fine elements or wires, which uh, provides heat. Ah, so that optimizes okay. year-round use. Oh, I can. Uh, so I can see it with my naked eye. But yeah, if the camera's getting it up, oh, yes, I think those little those little very thin vertical lines, that's actually wiring, huh? It's wiring. It's almost like a defroster, but for the front, and that optimizes the use of the sensors 12 months out of the year. I see. So snow, ice, and slush build up will wash itself away. So let's, let's take a brief look inside, because as you said, there's a lot of overlap in the powertrain. It's the same 536 horsepower if actually, you go all-wheel drive. 516. Oh, I'm so, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, no, no worries, this is 516 horsepower and 564 pound-feet of torque. Okay. Zero to 60 at 4.6. And you can see here the flat floor that I had mentioned before. So yeah, and two tiers of center console, floating please. Floating console. Sure. So as you mentioned, we have the floating center console, the flat floor, uh, and it's a bit reminiscent of when we launched the i3, where you had this uh, a lot of foot room in both the yeah. front and in the rear. Yeah. 
to optimize the space for the now the, this this curved screen this is the same yeah yep this is the same curved display so and does it have the same magnesium yes okay very cool yep uh, you can see the simplified layout so again button count reduced by roughly 50%. Uh, but we didn't delete all the physical controls. We have the iDrive controller. Here you see it in the crystal. Ah, uh, yes. And the buttons are essentially embedded in the wood trim. So uh, this is real wood. It's sustainably sourced, FSC certified. And the buttons are actually just part of the wood trim. I see. Very interesting. Now, this, just to diverge from the eye models uh, a little bit, is this a screen that we'll see kind of make its way across the BMW lineup over time as well, the iDrive 8 makes its way through the lineup? Well, we're starting with the iX and the i4. Uh, can't really give you any detail on that, but I could. you could imagine that there will be other places for it in the future. Okay, very cool. And it does, taking a closer look at this shape, it does appear to be larger than the i4, this iX. And we, I do apologize, it is just we're in a theater in Detroit, and this is the darker section of the theater. But this is the larger of the two vehicles, yeah? It is. So, dimensionally, this iX is roughly the same length and width. Oh, that's fascinating that there's five. USB ports right there. That's a clever little detail right in the back of the seat. So, so as I was mentioning, dimensionally, this is actually comparable to an X5 in length and width. Got it. So it's a mid-size SUV. And the height is about on par with the X6. Got it. Okay. And uh, I, what about, um, so powertrain-wise, what about the battery pack? So here we're looking at 106 net. Okay. 112 gross. Okay. Here you can see the storage area. There's actually more available down below. Apologies okay. for... Yep, no worries <laughs> at all. But you can see it's an ideal storage space for <laughs> accessories and your charging cables. The seats fold naturally. Okay, so this 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 has being a bigger vehicle, heavier everything else. It does have a shorter range, but we're still talking close actually, to 250 miles. Actually, 300. Oh, we you guys were a bit so the larger yeah. battery pack was able to compensate. Yeah. So. Okay. It's 300, uh, and again, this is our preliminary estimate. Final confirmation will be later in 2021. Okay. Uh, but we're pretty confident that we'll end up at around 300. Um, and uh, a lot of the same measures that we employ on the i4, we do on the iX. So the coefficient of drag on this is 0.25, which is still better than the i8, which given the fact that it's a mid-size SUV is, is quite astonishing. It, it really is. Um, this is an interesting detail. Uh, what are these lights for here? Because they are behind the, the tailgate, yeah? Yeah, this is actually, it's uh, simply a duplicate of the rear lights on the hatch. Okay. So imagine a situation where it's open and it's dark and if you're loading or unloading packages and you need, um, you, you just want to be visible to traffic, right? So if your passengers are on and flashing, see. it still works versus the ones that are Understood, on understood. Well, Don, thank you so much for giving uh, some really wonderful insight on the brand new BMW i4 and iX electric vehicles. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.